Welcome to Crochet After Dark, podcast episode number one. My name is April, and I'm an avid crocheter. I hope that this podcast will soon be one of your new favorites that you can add to your list of amazing crochet podcasts that you watch each week. Since this is the first podcast, I thought I'd introduce myself. My name's April, and I've been crocheting for over 30 years. I learned from my grandmother and then my mother, and now I'm continuing the tradition on and have even taught my daughter how to crochet. In today's episode, I want to show you two finished objects that I have. We'll take a look at a couple of my whips, although not all of them. I am going to film another video on Wednesday. We'll call that Whips and Weaving Wednesday, where I show you the whips I'm currently working on, as well as any projects where I still have to weave in the end. I know I'm not alone when I say that those are kind of the bane of my existence, and I really should weave them in as I go, but we all know that life gets ahead of us and that doesn't always happen. In addition to my whips, I'll share with you some upcoming projects that I have planned. They're mostly crochet related, but not whips, so that'll be interesting. And on occasion, I'll share with you tools, yarn reviews, and yarn hauls, although that's not anything we'll cover today. The first finished object I have to show you today, I'm actually going to post the pattern at the same time that I post this podcast. And this is a blanket I call the Double Triple Ripple. This beautiful blanket has an amazing texture that really makes it awesome. I crocheted this with three colors of Hobby Lobby yarn. One of the big challenges I had when I was writing this pattern and kind of working through it is I really wanted a pattern that had minimal holes. So you can see how the holes kind of start bigger and get smaller as you go down the blanket. These holes right here. Now I couldn't eliminate them completely from this pattern, but I was able to use a double crochet two together to help close them up a little bit. And so I'm super excited to share this free pattern. It'll be available as a video tutorial as well as on my website. This second pattern is a really cool corner to corner shell. So you can kind of see here where we start at the corner and then it just expands over time. This was done in Lion Brand Ice Cream Yarn in Bunny Tracks. I had two skeins of this yarn and I really only wanted to use the two skeins. So this blanket came out smaller than kind of I would have wanted. You can see here it's, it's not very wide at all. It's more like a car seat blanket or maybe a stroller blanket. It's really little. To edge it, I put this kind of mesh, mesh stitch and then I put a pico, you know, every few stitches. I really like the way it came out and this kind, kind of has a nice texture to it as well. Just not as much as the double triple ripple. So this will be a pattern coming up. I haven't completed it yet and I'm still working on the chart. I have somebody that does my crochet charts for me. So as soon as that's done, I'll get it posted on the website and get a video tutorial up. So that's just a reminder that if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so that you get notified when I do release new patterns like that corner to corner shell stitch. For whips, I actually sat down the other day and wrote down the names of all of the whips that I have, and I have 25 works in progress at the moment. Now I know that's kind of a lot, so I'm not gonna show them all to you today, but I will show you a few of them. Let's get started. The first one is this beautiful shells blanket, and I used a hobby yarn called Swallowtail. I think it's Tiger Swallowtail, something like that. When I first got this hobby yarn, I was really, um, not happy with how thin it was, but as it worked up, it's absolutely beautiful. And I love the way that the blanket falls. It's a nice lightweight blanket and I think it's perfect for a baby. The only thing is I wish I had gotten at least three or four skeins and that would have made, I think, a much bigger blanket. I do have this same yarn in one other colorway. I think it's called Monarch, but I haven't done anything with that yet. So if you have a project recommendation for two skeins of the Hobie, butterfly yarn in uh, the colorway Monarch. Please feel free to drop any recommendations you may have for the hobby butterfly yarn in the comments below. The only thing left to do on this blanket is to weave in the couple of ends. There's one end here that needs to be weaved in and there's the middle, the middle end. 
And I thought about finishing that up before I filmed this podcast, but that's not reality. The reality is I have a mostly finished object with two ends that need to be weaved in. So these will go on my pile to be weaved in this week. And hopefully I'll be able to show it as a finished object next week, but it's not going to change much because it's pretty much done. The next whip I have is a Yarnspirations pattern. It's called Juicy Fruits, Juicy Fruits and Whipped something, maybe Whipped Cream. And I did this one pretty much according to the pattern, except that I used an ombre yarn. So you can see how these dark colors start to get lighter as the blanket goes on and then they go back to dark and that's just part of the ombre yarn that I used a uh, red heart in the dark pink uh, green and yellow I'm not sure the exact color names but one of the things I loved about this pattern was the little x mark that was made below each of the shells it worked up really easy as a two row repeat and it was really simple to to work on as I watch tv or whatever and I'm really excited how it turned out because of the way that the rows worked on this, all of the ends are on one side. So I've done most of the ones here. These are all done up until about here. So I have these left. So I have about two thirds of the ends left and then this blanket will be ready for a border of some type. I haven't decided yet. The third whip I have to show you today is the Speedy Gritty Ruth by Krista at The Secret Yarnery. And I'm using various colors of, I love this yarn, except for the gold. The gold is actually Red Heart in, I think, Oro or Saffron. I like both of those gold colors in Red Heart. What I like about this pattern is it's really easy to work up. And even though it has all of these ends, every row we're changing colors, these are actually going to be tassels on the side of a blanket. So this will be my first blanket where I'm adding tassels but I'm really excited not to have to weave in these ends and instead just have a beautiful couch blanket um, with all of the colors that I love. My next whip is this beautiful scarf. It's made holding together one strand of Hobby Universe yarn and one strand of Burnout Velvet, regular velvet. And it just really has this nice kind of gradient of colors. I really loved the way that the Universe yarn looked when I found it online, but when it got here, it was thinner than I had expected. So this color is beautiful. And I can't remember, I got both the regular and the XL. So this is beautiful, but it's just, it's too thin, at least for the types of projects that I do to work by itself. And I was worried that if I try, did try to make it into a baby blanket or anything like that, I only got two skeins of it, so I didn't think I'd have enough. So I decided to pair it last Christmas with this velvet yarn. And I actually did two different types of this, one with the XL and uh, regular velvet, and then another one with the regular Universe yarn. And I don't remember, I don't think it was velvet. I think it was some other kind of soft yarn. I'll find it for the whips and weaving video that I'm gonna make for Wednesday. But it really does just have a nice gradient. You can kind of see how you go from these beautiful kind of dark colors, greens, blues, and just kind of go through the, the rainbow. And I loved this so much when I made it for my friend that I decided to make one for myself. So that's another whip. This should finish up pretty quickly. It's using, I think, a size K, J or K hook. And it's just a back and forth drunken granny. So it's really quick. I just need to find the inspiration to work on it and, and get it done. So hopefully by next week, but we'll see because I do have a lot of whips to work on. So it really just depends what's calling me for the week. Just a reminder, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy and you'd like to see more podcasts and crochet tutorials from me, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button as well. I don't want to make this video too long, but I did want to let you know about some of the projects and videos I'll be filming in the coming weeks. The very next thing I'm going to be filming is organizing my yarn stash. I do have a small apartment and currently the yarn lives in three different areas of my apartment. My bedroom, my dining room slash craft room, and my living room. Now my living room, as you'll see in the whips 
uh, and Weaving Wednesday is where I keep all of my works in progress. So that's not a big deal. That's right next to my couch. And so whenever I'm sitting down and watching TV, I can just grab a project that calls to me and work on it. But the bigger issue is that things are kind of now overflowing into drawers in my dresser. I have a tote bin on the floor. And I really just want to take the time to get those projects organized so that I can see what everything is. Now, I'm not one of those people who worries about how big my yarn stash is. I like a big yarn stash. But one of the other projects I'm going to be working on over the coming weeks is de-stashing. Now, not de-stashing because I think I have too much yarn. You can never have too much yarn. That's not a thing, at least not in my world. But what I want to do is clear up some storage space, get the yarn out of my dressers, so get that used up, and then clear out some of my storage areas, my storage bins, where I have my yarn so that I can order from some of these online retailers that I've been hearing and seeing so much about. There's Premier Yarns that has these beautiful cakes I want to look at. I've seen all of these ice yarn hauls that look amazing. Um, I've got one blanket kit from Mary Maxim, but I'd like to check out some of their other yarns as well. I've heard of a place called Hobium. So I really want to start expanding my yarn experience, my yarn knowledge, and looking at some of these online retailers and seeing the types of fibers that they have and the colorways that they have that I can really play with and kind of dig into and start to create. So that's something I'm looking forward to. And then my third project that I'm going to be working on again over the coming months even is narrowing down the number of whips that I have. I think 25 is too many. I'd like to get that down to like 20 and then kind of try to hold 20 through out the year with some smaller projects, some bigger projects. Because I love to crochet blankets, my projects tend to take a lot of time. That's okay, but it also means they're bulky and harder to store. So I'd like to pare down from 25 whips to 20 and then just see how things go over the course of the year. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. I'm going to have a link to my website, craftinginthenight.com, where you can get the free pattern for the double triple ripple. I'm also going to have links there for the Yarnspirations pattern that I mentioned uh, during the whip section, as well as the link to the Speedy Granny Ruth from Krista's channel over at The Secret Yarnery. So look in the description for those. I'll also put any other relevant links for you down there. If you have any questions for me, suggestions on things I should cover in upcoming podcasts, or just any comments in general, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. I really would love to hear from you. It would make me feel so much better if I knew that people were actually watching this video. So until next time, keep calm and crochet on.